Here we are, second day in a row, fishing this location. Why? Just cause I have a hunch that there is an absolute giant out here waiting to be caught and I'm gonna find her. Before we get started, I gotta give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Vikings, War of Clans. With the temperatures dropping, you're probably not fishing as much as before. Same goes for me. And if I'm not out fishing, I'm probably gaming. So I just wanted to take 30 seconds to tell you guys about one of my favorite games. If you like playing the best RPG and strategy games of the 90s, I guarantee you'll enjoy Vikings. And if you haven't tried it out yet, now is the perfect time. Vikings just went through a massive update. The great thing about this game is that it gives you the option to choose your own play style. I like building a huge army and destroying enemy castles. It's pretty addicting. Try playing for just five minutes and you'll see why me and 12 million other players are so into it. After the video, grab your phone, come play Vikings. You can find me in game at One Rod, One Real Fishing. And if you could support my channel by downloading Vikings from the links in the video description below, and you'll get my free bonus of 200 gold to get a quick start into this awesome game. Yesterday, I had a really good day fishing out here. And today, I have a plan. I've only brought two baits out of my entire tackle collection to fish with. My blade baits and my jigs. And the reason why I brought these two baits is because yesterday of all the baits I've used, these are the only two that I didn't catch any fish on whatsoever. So the goal for today, catch big fish, which jigs can do, and two, work on my fishing skills because uh, not catching anything on these two baits for this time of year, that, uh, that ain't right. Whew. It's quite a bit colder and windier today than yesterday, but that's actually good for me because that means there won't be 20 people out here. In fact, there's not a single person out here right now. So I should have this entire spot to myself for hopefully most of the day. I'll be honest with you guys. I was uh, pretty shocked that I couldn't catch a single fish on the blade bait yesterday. It's actually one of the best baits you can use this time of year. And the reason for that is because how you work it is you just yo-yo it off the bottom. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it look like a dying shad. And this time of year, when the water temps drop below 50 degrees, they actually start dying off themselves. So what ha will happen to these shad is that once they start dying, they'll sink to the bottom and then they'll flutter back up, sink to the bottom and flutter back up. And that's the exact action that uh, this blade bait can impart. And it has the same profile as a shad. Uh, you look at this nice two to three inch profile, depending on what you choose, silver color, some flash. This is actually, this is one of the best numbers baits you can use. So for me to not even catch one fish on it, that just tells me I need to work on my skills. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, all right, well, skills are working a little better today, I guess. That was literally my second cast. And like I said, this is a numbers bait. This isn't a uh, big fish bait, but you can catch big fish on it. The state record in Maryland was actually almost caught on a blade bait. It was a 10 pounder caught on the Potomac, I believe, or it might've been on this river. I'm redeeming myself a little bit. This guy's small, but he's relatively fat, I suppose. Let's go and let him go. It's exactly low tide right now. Throw him off in the deeper water. See you later, buddy. Whew. All right, that's what we're looking for with this bait. Looking to catch some, uh, some quick fish. The blade bait, all you do, you let the bait sink all the way to the bottom and you pull your rod tip up about, I'd say about six inches, six to 12 inches, depending. Oh, oh, sh that might have been another bite actually. And usually when you're gonna get a bite on this bait, it's when the bait's falling. So use a, use a sensitive rod and sensitive line just pay attention, be ready to set that hook. Oh sh that's not a fish, is it? Is that a fish? Wow! This is literally my next cast that this is literally my next cast over. It's another small fish, but <laughs> that's two fish in literally three minutes of fishing with the blade bait. I mean, I switched my gear out. I'm using different gear than yesterday, but I should have definitely had some bites on the blade bait yesterday, I feel. Oh, there we go, another little one. I think I'll be able to hit the, uh, the 10 fish mark, hopefully. At this rate, I definitely will be able to. I mean, if you guys have never tried the blade bait, I highly suggest that you give it a shot this winter. It is 
the best bait you can fish when you're trying to uh, imitate a dying shad. Use a quarter ounce bait if you're fishing, uh, I'd say three to five feet, use a quarter ounce. Then if you're fishing eight to 16 feet, that's when you want to upgrade to half an ounce. If you want to improve a technique, then do what I did. Just bring two baits out, don't bring anything else and force yourself to use it, even if you don't catch anything. Don't give up and always look to improve your range of skills. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> what the heck? This is, uh, oh, it's a good one. Guys, I am not kidding around. You saw me fish here yesterday. I, I mean, I haven't fished here in like half a year, but yesterday it, it was a struggle catching fish at some points. I already caught three fish in four minutes using the blade bait. Look at that. This guy's a nice two pounder. I don't even know if, I'm gonna try to flip him, but he might get off. Oh no, he choked both, both hooks. Get up here. Oh. All right, it's a pound and a half here. Not a two pounder. Come here, buddy. Oh yes. Look at that guys. Look at the way he choked it. Look at that. That's freaking nuts. You guys have no idea how good this feels to catch these fish like this back to back. It's December. It's cold out here. No one even came out here because it's so freaking cold out here. That's how cold it is. And look at that. Look at these healthy fish I'm catching back to back to back. You cannot beat this in December. See you buddy. Oh my nose is running. But I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling ready. I'm cast a little farther out, right behind that goose. Perfect. And when you're casting this bait, you just, you want to cover water. It doesn't really matter where you're casting. Cause I mean, you got the drop off is in this area and you got the rocks up shallow. I'm not going to cast in the rocks cause right now. Cause that, this bait is notorious for getting snagged. So basically I'm just fan casting this entire region, covering a ton of water. And anytime I get this bait in front of a, any type of fish, they're, eat they're eating it because it's a reaction strike. When that bait hits the bottom and just sits there, then you fling it up and it vibrates really quickly. Uh, if a fish is by it, it'll sense that vibration and it'll be like, oh, this is a dying shad. I got to go eat it. Instinctively, it, it wants to eat this time of year. It wants to get fat, fatten up for the winter. Let's try over here. This is where I caught all of my fish yesterday. Oh, on the fall. Oh, this one, this one bigger? This fish took it on the fall. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Guys, I don't know what's going on here, but this fish is pulling drag. I must've dropped it right on his freaking head. This is where the gear is really important, finding these bigger fish. This is a bigger fish. I'm using a seven foot three inch medium light rod. So every time this fish shakes his head, yeah, that's a good fish, it's the best one for today. Every time this fish shakes his head, the rod just absorbs all of that shock. And there's, oh, he's one treble hook in him. So this guy is, uh, this guy is on the edge of escaping. Okay, come here, come here, baby. Come here, come here, baby. Come to daddy. Oh yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Man, these fish are really feisty. That's what you gotta love about river fish is that they are a lot stronger than your typical pond or lake largy. Okay. Oh, I got him. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. He's not even hooked in the mouth. He's hooked on the bottom lip. Jeez. Oh, ah, look at that guys. <sighs> bottom lip hit it on the fall. Bopped him right in the head. <sighs> Two pounder right here. Chasing those shad. <sighs> that was awesome. All right. All right, big girl. Go out there, get even fatter. Good stuff. Now I will say, the only downside to this bait is, well number one, it snags really easily, but I haven't gotten snagged yet. And number two, you really aren't that likely to catch a giant fish on it. Cause the profile is really small, you know, it's imitating a two inch shad. And when it's cold this time of year, and you've got some big fat, lazy five, 10 pounders, they're not really looking to chase a two inch shad. It's a waste of energy for them. They're looking to just be real lethargic and just cruise around looking for a big, easy meal. So that's where the jig comes into play. And that's where I'm going to practice my jig dragging skills. And we'll see if that pays off with uh, a kicker fish for later today.
Oh, there's one. There's another one. This guy's a little dude. Oh, oh, hold on. I might spoke too soon. I can't even tell. These guys fight. So look at look at my rod shaking. This guy's just going all over the place. I have no idea how big it is. All right. Oh, there he is. All right. He's about a pound and a quarter. Look at him. Look at those head shakes. This water is like 45 degrees, and these fish are acting like the water's 65. He ate both trebles. This guy's freaking hungry. Ah. I had three options today. I could have either went waiting at a warm water discharge in Virginia, or I could have went swim bait fishing for landlocked stripers at a local reservoir. But I decided to come back here to practice my blade baiting and my jig fishing. And I think so far it's paying off. I'm definitely learning more about the blade bait. And hopefully I catch a big bass in the jig later today. See you a little feisty. Oh, that's a good flip. Just casting out, casting the, um, the oh, on the drop. <laughs> Next cast, look at that. Same frame. This is nuts. So what I like I was saying, I'm casting right past the rip wrap, right where the drop off starts, because I don't want to get snagged and that's where the fish are hanging out. The tide is currently, is, uh, low tide was about an hour ago, so the tide's coming up right now. And those fish are hanging out waiting for the tide to come up then as the tide goes up they move up a little bit and how big is this fish who knows oh, one hook same size yeah these fish are all about the same they're schooled up right now i found a whole school of them around here so they're all about the same size but there always be those one one or two giant fish hanging about just like yesterday first fish of the day boom four pounder all right good one Good one, little dude. Let's let you go. Can I make it three fish and three casts in December? Uh, the cast is a little too shallow. I might get snagged. All right, I should be good. Oh, uh, I got hit. I got hit. Wow. So far, I've been 100% on the uh, bite land ratio. I've got nine bites, landed nine fish. That was the first bite that I missed. Whereas yesterday I got landed seven fish, but I probably missed another seven bites. Oh, there's one. And I have no clue. How no. Ah, oh. right when I say I'm 100% on the bite catch ratio, I freaking lose two fish. And that one actually felt pretty big. My drag was actually screaming a little bit. Wow, if I lose a third fish in a row, I'm gonna be real mad for jinxing myself. Oh, there's one. I found him. I found you, buddy. Nope, I lost another one. Fourth fish lost in a row after I stated I was 100% on my hook catch ratio. I'm doing everything the same. Nice, that's how you jinx, that is, that is exactly how you jinx yourself, guys. There's one. Okay, don't get off, don't get off. I don't wanna lose another fish. I've already lost like four in a row. Oh, come on here. Nice and easy, girl. We do not have a giant here, but it's another solid fish. For some reason, this side, the fish seem to be bigger. I guess it's a bigger pack of him. Yeah, this one ain't bad. Let's, take, let's get a look at her. Oh, all right, take it easy. We do got treble hooks on. Oh yeah, I think it's a good one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh hell yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a good one, guys. A solid fish. <laughs> Look at that, that's the biggest one of the day, I think. It's over two pounds. I still can't believe not a single person's out here fishing. Yesterday there were 20 people, 30 people came and went, and today there's not a single person because of the wind. It's not because of the day of the week, it's because it's the wind. Yesterday was Tuesday, today's Wednesday, so that makes no difference in the number of people coming out to fish. Look at that. Solid two and a quarter pounder chunk on the blade bait all day, all freaking day. I mean, the wind is not a bad thing to fish if it's windy. It's uncomfortable, but 
They ain't gonna kill you. That is a beauty, beautiful fish. Super healthy. Look at the shoulders of that girl. Let's freaking go. You know, let's weigh this. We'll go ahead and weigh this one. Hmm, I'm gonna say 2.5 on the dot. I'll say two and a half pounds. Let's see what we got. Look at that. 2.443. 2.43. I was off by 0.07. It's not bad. Off by less than a tenth of a pound. All right. All right, fat girl. Get out of here. Good plop. Why is the fishing so much better today compared to yesterday? Well, one, angling pressure. One angler out here versus 30 to 40 yesterday. Big difference. Number two, it rained yesterday. And what that did, it was actually a warm rain, so it warmed the water up a little bit and provided some oxygen to rejuvenate these fish a tiny bit. And number three, it's windy. It's not windy right now, but it was windy earlier and it will be windy later and the wind is coming from a westerly direction. And the two best winds to fish are from the west and the south, where the two worst winds to fish are from the north and the east. So all of these conditions combined with me using a deadly winter bait, and I'm still not really sure why they wouldn't bite it yesterday, but today this bait's kicking some ass. And all I can say is that it is proving to be one awesome day for being out here.